Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friend. So glad to be with you today. It's going to be a good show. It's going to be a good week because I'm going to have the same guest on all week. And we are going to talk about something that affects everybody. It's not a real pleasant subject, but this is the time of year that you kind of begin to gather around all your records and you get your W-2 form from your boss. It's called income tax. And I have an expert who will be with us all week. I think he can answer most of your questions, but also he's written books that uh, some of you might need. Uh, some of you or who have businesses might need them. And guess what? He says the IRS is nothing to be afraid of. Not so sure about that. They've scared me before, but you are going to love Dan Pilla. He is a tax litigator and a consultant. He's been a consultant before Congress. And I saw him on a number of TV programs, and I thought, I want the homekeepers people to see him. And the Lord worked it out. Worked it out that he can be with me for an entire week, actually, on the program. So you're going to love this. And I'm going to join Stephanie. Get this. Have you heard of an orange lemon cake? You know, we've got a lot of people out there trying new different things with recipes and ingredients. So I'm anxious to uh, try this one. I'll tell you, it's a pretty pretty ones pretty color and I have a feeling it tastes good and Stephanie admitted that she tasted the bat the I was going to say the battery <laughs> oh before I join her though the uh, address and phone number is coming up on your screen we love hearing from you and uh, thank you for every gift you send every dime every dollar we so appreciate it and you can do that a couple ways by writing to us at uh, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And also that 800 number is on the screen. 1-800-229-0059 will help you to uh, do it more quickly than the snail mail, okay? Either way, God bless you. We thank you so very much. And now I've joined Stephanie. Um, you know, when I grew up, there were certain ways you did things, and that was kind of it. But some of the recipes we find there... It's like a lady got an idea in the kitchen one day and she... Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Well, it's funny because I thought as we came into the new year, we might do some healthy recipes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so those that are still working on that orange, 10 pounds? Orange lemon. It's kind of fruit, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's no. fruit. Yeah, it's fruit. <laughs> okay, so super... This is one of those recipes where it seems like you know what you're doing in the kitchen, but it's the easiest thing you could possibly mm -hmm. do. So it tastes so... Do people are going to want the recipe and you're going to be embarrassed. No? <laughs> well, yes, but... This is um, a lemon supreme cake. Don't okay? offer any explanation let them think it was really hard oh yeah because this is like this could be a from scratch uh, like you went and out and not. picked oranges off your tree because right. we live in florida okay and here's the kicker orange gelatin mm -hmm. okay and um i'm going to, there's a little icing that you put on the top it's got some uh confectioner sugar and i'm going to put in um a tablespoon, a couple tablespoons of uh, orange juice mm -hmm. at a time. And until, it's a cup of confectionery sugar. Until mm -hmm. we get, um, you know, get the right consistency. Yeah. So I have four eggs, and then I have two-thirds cup of canola oil and water. That's it. That's it. So easy. And how you can impress. And it's, it looks so moist. I can't wait to try it because it looks so moist. I'm now, gonna put one I'll tell more. you this. I have a doctor's appointment next week. I'm scared <laughs> because we just went through the holidays and the last time we went, I went to the doctors, I cried on the scale. That's so, right. Here's, what I'm, here's my plan because ignorance is bliss. Mm -hmm. I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to tell her not to say the number out loud. <laughs> <laughs> that is truly my plan. Yep. She'll probably cooperate. Oh, she will if she doesn't want my blood pressure to be through the roof We're going like to spray time. this really good. Gonna We're going to spray, spray this. Pan. Butt pan really good. And I'll go over. Yes, please. She always tells me to go over the sink to do Safety it. Safety first. No one needs to slip and fall and hurt themselves. If I told you how many times I fell over the past year. I well, what's the it. matter with you? I don't know. I fall downstairs. Are you a klutz? I, I've never been a klutz. And <laughs> I'm only 29. So what is the problem? I don't know. <laughs> okay, so this is just good and mixed up. I think I've mentioned it before, talking about getting old, and I am. Oh, wow. uh, <laughs> I, 
to put it bluntly. I have eight great grandchildren and they're getting tall. One of them is six foot. Mm. Anyway, someone asked Judge Judy, you know, about getting old. She says one thing, don't fall. And that's what the, all the doctors say. Yeah, I don't and, know what my deal is. But. And I would have to say I'm pretty careful about that. I think about it. So we have the bunk pan sprayed really, really good. I've got uh, stairs at home, stairs here. Yes. Yeah, I've gotten to just where I really am paying attention to what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I think what part of my problem is I have too many tabs open in my brain, <laughs> and I'm thinking about something totally different and not paying attention to what I'm doing. How do you close down a tab in your brain? Uh, by the way, that oh. is a, that is a beautiful color. Can you hold it to me? Well, here's the finished product. I tasted this morning just the cake mix because we had forgotten the orange gelatin. Mm -hmm. This is scrumptious. So I'll just try it again. <laughs> when is your doctor's appointment? Next Friday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got time. Yeah. You got time to lose it. Oh, in. my goodness. Well, you're... That you're, is delicious. And isn't it beautiful? So but good. you are... You're, you're okay. far more artistic than I am, so... Well, I don't know about that, mm -hmm. but... You did good. Uh -huh. Very nice. That's a, that's a pretty good consistency, really. Very nice. Um, but you know when it comes to this kind of thing, just eat a little bit. See, look how good she is at that. Oh, you wouldn't want to see it if see I did. See how it. good I am yeah. at this. You wouldn't want to see. I'm going to take it. one bite and I'm going to run up to my office and guzzle and some water <laughs> so that I'm full and I won't want to come back down. That's a oh, piece of art right look there. Look at that. Go, Jet. Mm -hmm. Go, just we got 1 minute. So I'm going to get some for you, and you're going to taste it. We were supposed to cut it oh, with this. Oh, I cut it with the cake thing. <laughs> she we're in a hurry. <laughs> Can you get you some of this? Oh, there you guys, go. it's good. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's gorgeous. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Because mm. I'm a gotten for fun. There are no words. No words. Mm. That is refreshing. Mm -hmm. That's a word. You know, you could put some orange slices around it. You could. <laughs> My mouth's full. My mother said, don't ever so talk about food in your mouth. But if you want this recipe you do. and you watch regularly, information's coming up on your screen. No cost. We can email it to you or we can mail it to you. Uh, just pay attention to what the announcer says. And then uh, you're going to meet Dan Pilla. You're going to love him. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Mr. Dan Pilla, welcome to Homekeepers. I've been looking forward to this. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yes, and you're going to be my guest for a whole week. I've often said to the viewers that uh, we deal with anything and everything that affects the home, and that is anything and everything, right. and certainly tax issues. And when I saw you on TV a couple of times, I thought, here is the man who can explain uh, how many pages is, is our tax system? <laughs> well, they, they don't even count it in pages anymore, of course, with the Internet the way it is, right, uh -huh. and, and the electronic systems. But the, uh, the estimate now is 4 million ta words in the tax code. And, and that's not even the worst part of it. The worst part of it is that it changes so often. Since 2001, the National Taxpayer Advocate has, has identified that since 2001, the tax code has gone through more than 59 hundred changes and that doesn't even include the changes that were brought about by the temp, the Trump tax law that passed you know in, in uh, who in, writes these well, things well I'd like to slap the person that <laughs> writes these things because people get so confused mm. and so convoluted mm. because the law is so convoluted you mm. can't keep track of it mm. the short answer the accurate answer is that Congress writes the laws and the committee of Congress well, don't get me uh, started on the, Congress. exactly exactly right <laughs> uh, but but the bottom line is these laws mm. come out of uh, the Congress of the United States and then so they, they make a law that says X and then they give the IRS the authority to pass regulations that are consistent with the law and the regulations are even more broad than the law itself and so if you've got four million words in the tax code the regulations have to be <laughs> ten times that I didn't much. think I'd get angry till Wednesday <laughs> but it's Monday. Uh, okay we got to backtrack because uh, it's so easy to talk to this gentleman 
Uh, but he ha you have been on the National Commission for the Restructure. I, I, was a I was a consultant to the National Commission on Restructuring the IRS. I wasn't a member of the commission, but I was a consultant. The National Commission on Restructuring the IRS came out of the 1997 Senate Finance Committee hearings into IRS abuse. You might recall the people <laughs> testifying before Congress with their yeah, faces hidden. Yeah, otherwise the hidden, nightmares. Right, that's right. Their faces were hidden and their voices were altered electronically, right, so they sounded like Darth Vader when they were talking. But, but, the, <laughs> but the, that commission was responsible for for making specific rec uh, change, recommendations to change the tax laws. And you have addressed Congress before. Oh yeah, I've testified before Congress on a number of occasions and in fact in, the, in connection with the National Commission on Restructuring the IRS, I made 33 specific proposals and recommendations to the Commission for tax law changes, uh, a number of which ended up in the law and are now the taxpayers' rights that people have that keep them from being run over by the IRS, if you know you what know, they You know, it, it has been said that you know more about the IRS and the commissioner of the IRS, so. It's been said, yeah. Welcome to Home Keepers. <laughs> now, you. let's go way back. Uh, sure. you, you've authored 14 books. You've done thousands of radio and TV interviews. Um, but where did this start? Because uh, later in the week, we're going to talk about his book, big book called Amnesty. How to get tax which amnesty. Which means forgiveness. Which means forgiveness. <laughs> Thank God. Fresh start, resurrection, right? <laughs> Is that familiar language? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Today and probably tomorrow, we're going to talk about how to uh, win your tax out. And you know, uh, Dan, I thought, looking at this, there's so many people out there who are hurting and they mm -hmm. need yep, this yep. information and you'd never know it. Right, They're not right. talking about that's it. That's right. People are ashamed of it, especially Christians. Mm -hmm. You know, Christians have it in their heads and they're right that mm -hmm. they have a responsibility to, to pay their taxes and, mm -hmm. and obey the lawful functions of government. There's no question about that. And so when people get sideways with the IRS, they're ashamed of that mm -hmm. and they don't want to talk about and it. And scared. And, uh, and most definitely afraid. No Terrified, question about yeah. it. Uh, but, but uh, you know, people need to understand that there are remedies for these problems, whether you're going through a tax audit or you're dealing with a collection situation situation of some kind, you owe the IRS money that you can't afford to pay. There's solutions mm -hmm. to that and, there, and, and, and people need to take advantage yes, of that Yes, and, and as uh, we go through this week, we'll have websites up, telephone numbers. Um, for people in trouble, this could be the best bargain of their whole life. But how did you get started in this? This is kind of a singular type of job. It's it, it, a it, one it, of a kind. It is. It's a, it's, it's a one of a kind. And in fact, when I got started, you know, rolling in this business, so to speak, you could count on one hand the number of people in the country that were doing this work. Mm -hmm. But I got started in the, in the uh, late 1970s, and I got started as a result of problems my father had with the IRS. He had a small business in our hometown of St. Paul, got behind on his employees withholding taxes, and in 1974, the IRS padlocked the doors, and they auctioned the equipment off for just a couple cents on the dollar. And then in 1978, they turned their attention to our family home, and they tried to seize and sell the home for, our, for, the back, for my dad's back tax liability. And that's how I got started. I came home one day and my mom was sitting at the kitchen table with a letter from the IRS in her hand and she hands this thing to me and says, you know, what do you make of this? And, and I how read old it. were you? I was, about, I was 18. And I read the letter and I said, well, it looks like they're gonna try to, try to seize the house. And she reacted with a face like you have right there. Just, what, well, what, you know, she says, well, what do we do? And I, of course, I had no idea what to do. But what I did is I went over to local law school and I started fumbling around in the law library in the Internal Revenue Code and I literally stumbled onto a section of the tax code that deals with taxpayers' rights issues and limits the power of the IRS. And I start reading in this code section. And I didn't get six pages into it and discovered that the IRS was proceeding illegally to seize the house. So I did what any 18-year-old would do under the circumstances. <laughs> What's I, that? I sued the IRS. <laughs> you know, oh, you what, sued the I sued the What could go wrong right. with that strategy, right? What could go wrong? So yeah. I sued the IRS. And I found myself in a, in a federal courtroom in Minneapolis in front of a judge. And uh, I'm trying to get the IRS stopped, right, with this with this Mickey Mouse lawsuit. Quit stealing your stuff. Yeah, exactly. And so I, you know, with this Mickey Mouse lawsuit. So in any event, they fly an attorney in from Washington D.C. from the tax uh, division of the Justice Department this. to have my to have my case thrown out of court. And so I stand up in front of the judge and I say, Judge, you know, the law says this, and they're trying to do that, and you know, they shouldn't be able to get away with that. <laughs> And it was about, it was, that's about Did all I said. Did you have on jeans and the t-shirt? <laughs> that's about all I have. Rented a suit. I rented a suit. Yeah. But no, that was about all I said. And I sat down. And so now this attorney gets up and he starts talking to the judge and he's blathering on and on and on about court cases this and code sections that. And I had no idea what this guy was talking about. And I'm not sure he did either. But he was going on and on. And when he was finished, 
the judge looked at me and pointed to him and said, he's right. And he slammed the gavel. And I thought, well, this is easy. You know, so I, so I win the case, right? And so now here was the fascinating part of the story, though. In between the time that my dad got in trouble with the IRS and the time that I was in that courtroom in Minneapolis, my dad got involved in the tax protester movement. And these are the people that say the tax laws are unconstitutional mm -hmm. and voluntary and violate the Fifth Amendment. All you've heard all that yeah, stuff, I've met right? Them. Uh -huh. Yeah, and you've met them. And, they, and, they just, and none of that stuff works. Mm -hmm. And they just get in more and more trouble. Mm -hmm. But in any event, my dad had these problems. And so he's kind of he motivated. Well, well <laughs> what, what he was doing is grasping at straws, right? Yeah. And that's what people do when they have these problems yeah. is they grasp at straws. And so he gets involved in this tax protester movement. The, the point is that the courtroom that day was packed with my dad's tax protester buddies. And they all had tax problems, right? Every one of them. So by the time I got home to my mother's house, they were lined up at the door. And they said, you know, can you help me with my tax problem? And I said, sure, baby, I'm undefeated. Let's go here. So, so it was <laughs> and an that's it, the way they it, started. It was an instant practice. And it was an instant practice. And I was helping people immediately with all kinds of these egregious kinds of tax problems. I'm sorry, I think it's it's miraculous in many ways well, and, and there's no question and people about were it. being taken advantage of yeah. it's not right the yeah, Lord didn't like that yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's no question about it you're absolutely right God put me here specifically mm -hmm. for that for that purpose yeah. I believe that if you just joined us I'm talking to Dan Pilla who is the author of how to win your tax audit the information is on the screen for you to uh, get this book you can go and find out about it it has helped untold thousands of people before we get into that minutia I'm what do you think about taxing income? I think it's wrong. Well, I think it's wrong. I think it's wrong as well. Shouldn't it be a consumption it, it, tax? It should be a consumption tax, no question about it. The founders specifically rejected income taxes as the means of raising revenue, revenue for the government precisely because what you tax, you get less of. I mean, it's a basic economic principle. Mm -hmm. What you tax, you get less of, and what you subsidize, you get more of. So when you tax income, and production and growth, what you're doing is limiting income, production, and growth. These are the very things that we need to have a stable economy that's moving forward that helps people move their way up the economic ladder. When you burden income and production and growth, you're essentially holding people down mm -hmm. unnaturally and, and, and in an ungodly fashion, in my opinion. So there's no question in my mind that the income tax is, is not the way to do well, it. Well, at what point in our history did we get into income tax, did they start out like that? No, they didn't start out like that at all. The, the, uh, the federal government was very limited, of course, for the first 150 years or so of, mm -hmm. it, of our history. And so there was very little revenue that was required to support the federal government. But the revenue that was collected was collected m uh, exclusively through import duties and manufacturer's excise taxes, right? Th taxes on, on coffee and sugar and tobacco and alcohol production and so on. And then, of course, imported products would, would carry a burden. And that's how the federal government was, was, was functioned. The very first income tax was passed during the Civil War, but it was later declared unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. And so in 1913, then, the Constitution was amended uh, to add the 13th Amendment, the 16th Amendment, which became the income, which is the income tax amendment, and that gave birth to the uh, to the modern income tax system. It will never change in my lifetime, but it should. It, well, it's, it should. It's equitable. It, it, it should, and, I've, and frankly, I've been putting a lot of pressure on over the years to to you. bring to bring about the change. And, and in my opinion, if Satan himself created a tax system, it wouldn't be any worse than the mm -hmm. income tax system that we have now. It's a diabolical system but, for sure, and it keeps people in bondage. It holds them down economically. It holds them down in, in a lot of different ways, and and really, it crushes the the spirit of growth absolutely. that's uh, that's yeah. that God naturally puts in people's hearts. Now, to put it in perspective, say, say we had a 10% consumption tax. Uh, a middle-class person or a poor person, they'd pay 10% on a loaf of bread. A rich man mm -hmm. would pay 10% on a yacht. Yeah, it's exactly right. And, 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 this is, and you see, you just hit the nail on the head. You just, in that very simple explanation, overcame the biggest objection to the sales tax that there is. People say, well, sales tax is regressive. It hits poor people harder. No, it doesn't hit poor people it's equitable. harder. What it does is it hits everybody in proportion to their spending. Mm -hmm. Lower income people spend more and so or spend less, and so they pay less in taxes. Mm -hmm. High income people spend more, and so they're going to pay more in taxes. It's, just, mm -hmm. it's as simple as that. Yeah. Uh, and the only thing that could change it would be Congress. They have a 23% approval rating. To me, that's high. 23% <laughs> is high? Very high for Congress, <laughs> yes, but don't get me on that. All right, now let's, uh, let's talk about um, 
You say in, in your book, the name of the book is How to Win Your Tax Audit, and I have a feeling a lot of you watching right now are you got your ears all perked up because you need it. Um, you say there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. Yeah, that's exactly right. I don't care what kind of tax problem you have. I don't care how long you've had the problem. I don't care what you've tried to do to fix the problem. I don't care who's told you you can't fix the problem. There is no such thing as a hopeless tax case. There's always a way to resolve it. In the audit book, for example, I talk very specifically about how to go through a face-to-face -face or a correspondence mm -hmm. audit with the IRS where the IRS is challenging your tax return. I show you exactly how to respond to those challenges, mm -hmm. precisely what you need to do to prove that your tax return is correct. And here's the secret that I expose in the book that everybody needs to know, and that is that IRS is wrong 60 to 90 percent of the time in the audit results that they come up with. So if you're sitting across the table from a tax auditor who says, okay, we're all done with your audit now, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, you owe us X dollars, and they slide that piece of paper across the table and they want you to sign it, that, that determination is, is wrong 60 to 90 percent of the they time. They don't sign it. Don't sign it. You have the right to appeal the decision to the, what the IRS calls their appeals office. And their written job description is to negotiate a settlement with the taxpayer. So this is where you want to be with your cases, in that appeals office, where you're going to get to the right decision. Someone once said that knowledge is power. <laughs> that is great. You know, I remember many years ago, I think it was on Good Morning America show, when I was probably getting ready to go to work. Um, they sent people out to, and probably some of them were IRS offices, with the same kind of information, this is what we made, this is what we spent, sent it out to five or six places, and they all came up with a different yeah, number. Yeah, you, you're talking about the Money Magazine surveys. Oh, right? I talk that about, I talk oh, about in those here? in, yeah, the, in, the, okay. uh, in the, uh, the book, How to Win Your Tax Audit. Money Magazine, they used to do this in the 90s. I haven't done it for years. Yeah. But they used to do this in the 90s where they'd build a hypothetical family financial profile. All right, so here are the facts. Mm -hmm. They'd send this profile out to 50 different tax preparers, all in the private sector, and 50 different tax preparers mm -hmm. would, would, with the challenge, figure out what their tax liability is based on these facts. Mm -hmm. 50 different tax <laughs> preparers 50. would come up with 50 different answers. No two of them ever matched. No mm -hmm. two ever matched. And the thing about it, and the last study they did was about <laughs> 1998 or 1999, and that, to me, was the most fascinating one because only, they only got 48 answers back because the only two with any sense mm -hmm. dropped out before the, <laughs> before the thing was finished, right? But so they, they come up with 48 different answers, but, and, and, I, and I'm just approximating the numbers now because I don't remember specifically, but on the low end, the tax liability was about $7,000, and on the high end, the tax liability was like forty-three dollars or $44,000. So not only, not only were these people not on the same page, they weren't even in the same book, mm -hmm. right? And so how can you come up with such a vast spread of answers That's the truth. On, how could they? On, the basis, on the basis of the tax law? And, and the simple answer to the question is, well, maybe all 40 of them didn't know what they were doing, which is certainly possible. Mm -hmm. The other problem is you've got so many variations in the tax code, if-then scenarios in the tax code where people can adjust their circumstances based on these, uh, on these options that are available in the code, and if you don't know what they are, you don't get, you know, you, you don't get the benefit of them. So you have a bunch of <clears throat> IRS agents who are there guessing. Well, yeah. Now, when we're talking about IRS tax auditors, that's a little bit different mm -hmm. because the tax auditors, tax auditors, and, and listen carefully now because I'm not going to mince these words, right? Okay. Tax auditors use bluff and intimidation, misinformation and disinformation, and in many cases they just outright bold-faced lie to people concerning what their rights are and what their obligations are. And so when 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 the typical person goes through a tax audit. The, let me just give you some statistics. A little statistics scared here. person. Yeah, typical little scared person mm -hmm. goes through a tax audit. About 88% of every person that goes through a tax audit ends up owing more money. All right, so the IRS mm -hmm. looks at 88% of the tax returns and mm -hmm. finds that there's something wrong with them. Are you telling me that 88% of the people in the country are, are making mistakes on their tax returns and cheating blind? I don't believe yeah. it. All right? And it's always more. And it's always more. It's mm -hmm. always more. Very, very tiny fraction, mm -hmm. uh, less than 2%, uh, get a mm -hmm. refund back from their audits. <clears throat> all right? So 88%, there's changes, they owe more money. But as I said already, those results are wrong 60 to 90% of the time. So what does that tell you? These auditors are just <clears throat> cheating. Uh, they're mm -hmm. cheating in these audits. 
and they're cheating specifically with the purpose of getting people to pay money they don't owe. I think you've really probably given quite a few people some an optimistic viewpoint. And guess what? We're out of time. Out of time. Uh, he'll be with us tomorrow. We're going to con really con uh, continue this. Uh, we've just barely scratched the surface, but uh, you can count on the fact this gentleman knows what he's talking about. So you stay with me. Have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Well, you know, it has been said many, many times that uh, there's two things you can truly count on, that's death and taxes. And I, I don't know, I was um, thinking about uh, the privilege of having Dan Pillow on the program, and I thought, I'm so thankful that I can bring him to you, to our Homekeepers viewers, because when this program started, I want you to know we're so interested in your soul, your relationship with God and all those things, but also you have to live here. And if we can help you, like medically or with your taxes or with all of the things that you have to deal with, if we can help you that way, it's just a bonus for us. And so to be able to bring you this gentleman for an entire week, uh, it's just my privilege. So don't forget, he'll be on four more times. And on the last program, we're going to talk about a, box, a book that he wrote. I believe it's called The Light and the Salt, but uh, how Christians really need to get the message of the gospel out. This man is 100% Christian, and he wants the message of Jesus Christ to get out way as far as we can get it for as many people as can hear it and those who hear it, those who would respond. So uh, it's going to be a good week for us, and you might want to... Uh, Remember to have a pencil handy to take down the information where you can get his books. Some of you right now I'm talking to, you've got a problem with the IRS. And I think we can bring you some hope and encouragement. So listen to what he has to say. You might need to uh, get one of his books and hopefully come out victorious over the IRS. Wouldn't that be great? We are out of time, but join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.